Hello and welcome back to RC Model Reviews and on the build bench from hell today I've got the Freewing CTLS. Now you've seen this before, you've seen my review of it, I quite like it, it's a really nice little plane. But it, I thought it needed something more and, and so I put the flaps on, look, see, flaps up, flaps down, flaps go up, flaps go down, flaps go up. Um, installed the flaps, it was a bit of a bugger of a job actually to be totally honest, it wasn't as easy sailing as it could have been and I've hooked them up to the slider on my Tyrannus so I've got fully proportional control of the flaps without taking my thumbs off the sticks. That's why I love sliders. Yeah, imagine if you put them on a knob up here, it's a real pain. If you put them on a switch where well, you've only got three or three positions, whereas this is infinitely variable flaps all the way from normal flying or slowly down to full flap deployment there. So, hey, it's the best of all worlds. And uh, on the jet behind me, I've hooked up the flaps to the same slider and I've put the undercarriage on the other slider so I can basically lift the gear, operate the flaps again without taking my thumbs off the stick. Oops, better be careful of that. Um, so there you go. Now, some of the problems I encountered when putting the flaps on this thing, I'll just unplug stuff before I end up um, taking off when I don't want to. There you go. Now, some of the problems I encountered, I'll put this somewhere safe, don't want to wreck that, were that the way they've designed this model is stupid. For the flaps, it's stupid because we're all familiar with having the aileron servos, one faces that way and the other one faces that way so that when you run them together in a Y lead, one aileron goes up as the other goes down, even though the servos are going the same way. That's really simple, that works fine. But they did the same thing for the flaps, honestly. They've got one servo facing this way and one servo facing that way, so that if you try and use a Y lead, you just run one extension and put a Y lead in here for the two servos, then the flaps operate like ailerons if you put them on the same channel. The one flap will go up, the other will go down. So I had to run two extensions down, one for each aileron servo all the way down here, and it's not easy on this model because it's got that lovely detailed cabin inside. It's even got a little roof inside the cabin. So getting the wires through there was actually quite awkward. Lots of prodding with screwdrivers and poking bits of uh, uh, MIG wire through to try and get the whole thing caught up and pulled through, but I managed to do it. So that's all wired up, it's all great. Those leads come down and go onto the receiver now. And the Tyrannus, it's a piece of cake to actually set up the mix, so I've got the two servos running off the one slider and basically one servo operates in one direction, one operates in the other, so the flaps move in unison. Very easy, that was the easiest bit setting that up. But I really got confused there at one stage, really lost the plot, because I bought these servos from RC Timer. Here we go, here's one of them. Now this little servo here is a, about a 10 gram digital metal geared server. I bought them just to see how, you know, basically review them, see how they worked. And I thought well, if they're actually any good, um, that would be quite a well-priced little server. Now I bought quite a bit of stuff from RC Timer and their stuff's generally, you know, um, as good as anywhere else in many cases, sometimes not so good, but that's true of all the Chinese suppliers. And I thought if these are good, well, I'll buy a few of those. I can use them in the AXNs and all sorts of things. So I bought four and put two in here, set it up, flew it, brilliant, lovely. Um, got back and just today, just today actually I was just going through making some changes to the setup on this and one of the flaps goes up and I'm thinking it's not supposed to do that. I thought what's happened, have I upset the mixers on the Tyrannus? No, no, went through, checked it all, that's all working perfectly. It was the servo, the servo has an intermittent fault in it. Now let's see if we can make it fault. Now here it is, it's all set up. I've got one of these little servo testers, these are really useful little things actually. This is one that Flydream sent me some time ago, and I, I must admit, um, I've made a lot of use of it. I should have actually featured this earlier because it's really handy. It's got a little knob here you can turn to basically just adjust the servo position. You can even use it for testing speed controllers because this becomes your throttle control. Um, yeah, so you, when you turn this, the little servo arm should turn. It's got a button which will cycle between three modes. One of them is manual mode, where turning the knob turns the servo. The other one is center mode. So when you're setting up a model and you want to get the servo centered and get the arms in the right position, it's really handy to be able to just press a button, have the servo centered, put your arm on, set your linkages up, and away you go. Instead of having to plug around with the receiver and all that sort of stuff and power it up through the ESC. And then it's got a third mode which is cycle. It just makes the servo go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. So if you get a new servo, you're unsure of it, you can leave it cycling for hours hours and make sure it's not going to fail because the first few hours of operation are the period when anything electronic is most likely to fail. So there we go, now I'll uh, turn this on, there we go, turned it on and you can see the little light here, little LED, I hope you can see that, it's a bit hard with this lighting, little LED means it's in manual mode. Now did you see that just jerk then? Here we go, now look it's, in, it's faulted at the moment, see? When I turn this knob, the first part of the knob it works fine but then stops responding, it's not actually responding here to the rest of this knob movement. So 
it doesn't even make it to the center it's just short of the center and it stops that's what it did on the ctls so one of the flaps was all screw with because basically it wouldn't go down far enough to go to the neutral position there you go um so dud servo dud servo now it does come right if you power cycle it sometimes so let's just actually what i'll do is i'll put it it's the center mode there's the cycle mode now notice in the cycle mode it's only giving a little kick because the rest of the movement it isn't responding to that's pretty bad so we'll, we'll power it off power it on again and see if it works properly now it's working see look here we go here's the knob turn around there turn around there it's following the knob perfectly if we go to the center mode pops to the center i just put the arm on the center so it's, we know where the center is and then we put it onto cycle mode and now it's moving smoothly across the entire the entire range of movement so that servo when i first turned it on was no good then power cycle it comes right then it might stop again so the servo is suffering from an intermittent fault so as i say i put two of them in the ctls for flaps one of them failed so i thought well, i'll swap it out put, put the other. I, bought, I bought four we'll put the second one in so i swapped that out and it did the same thing and i thought "Ooh, what have i done wrong I put the fourth one in that was fine so two out of four dud and i must admit i'm a bit concerned about leaving them in the ctls but we'll see what happens um, hopefully the other two are okay it was only these two that were faulty so yeah but it shows the value of these little devices actually because i was concerned that maybe i'd screwed up the mixing and something was going on but i just plugged this in operated it manually and it simply didn't respond so this little device saved me a lot of head scratching and uh, and fault finding brilliant little thing and so yeah lots of manufacturers make them you'll find them on most of the hobby sites websites you can order them at cheap as beans i don't know five six dollars maximum i should think and yeah really is a useful little addition to your uh, kit so what I'll do now, the wind's blowing, blowing a gale out there, so I can't show you the CTLS flying. I'll do that when the wind has calmed down. I'll show you how those flaps work. But I have to say that if you have one of those CTLS and you're thinking of putting flaps on it, I really wouldn't bother, to be honest. The flight characteristics are not greatly improved. It doesn't fly that much slower. The only benefit is that you can do slightly steeper approaches. If you're flying from a small field, they might be useful, but meh, doesn't slow it down, doesn't really do much for it. It's one of those planes where the flaps don't seem to be that effective. Perhaps it's because it's so lightly loaded and fly so nicely in the first place it's not like it's a heavy jet where flaps are incredibly useful because they give you a quite a degree of braking and allow you to come in with a bit of power on to maintain your control so yeah but i thought i'd share this with you and what i'll do in the next one of the next videos is i'll show you the flaps on the ctls we might put a camera on it and i'll show you from the ground we'll do a bit of a thing so there you go in fact what i might do if people are interested is we'll talk about flaps i might do a little thing on flaps why you need them what they're supposed to do how to set up your model because all sorts of funny things can happen with flaps when you put flaps on sometimes some models will pitch nose down and some models will pitch nose up it really depends usually it's the high wing models pitch nose up the low wing models pitch nose down i'll explain why that is so sometimes you need to put a little mix in so that the flaps and the elevator work in unison to make sure that you don't have sudden pitch changes when you apply the flaps and which is better proportional flaps or on a switch if you want to see it let me know comments in the or put your comments in the bottom and your questions there too and i'll do my best now i've got to get on lots more stuff to do the man's coming to do my wall soon thank you for watching thumbs up see you next time on rc model reviews